Good day, folks. Welcome to this special edition of the State of the Weather Address. And instead of uh, doing forecasting breakdowns, we're actually going to look back at the tornado season. And believe it or not, it's the fifth year in a row where we've had much below average tornadoes. So I'm going to talk about that in this episode and how you know abnormal that is. And I'm also going to talk about maybe a couple of reasons of why this is happening. So let's fire away this edition of State of the Weather Address. Alrighty, as of this video on, uh, this is like actually early December when I made this video. Uh, this is a 2016's tornado count right now, and it takes them a couple of months. I think it's like three months for them to update this sometimes. You know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, false tornado reports, stuff that maybe didn't get reported correctly. Anyway, that, that takes some time to sort all that out. But uh, this is the current tornado count right now. And there was a little bit of an outbreak or a couple of outbreaks very recently in early December. So this is going to spike up kind of right here-ish. And I think there were a couple of little small events in November as well. So this will actually probably spike up to probably here-ish. Uh, but you can see this is way below average. This pink line is the, you know, lowest tornado season ever uh, since I think 1950, if I'm correct on that. And uh, this red line is the highest tornado season ever, and I think that was 2011. So the yellow line right here is the 75th percentile, 50th. Uh, the green line is the 50th, which is average tornado. That's This green line here is the average amount of tornadoes that should occur each year. And the blue line is the 25th percentile. So below that blue line means that less than 25% of the tornado seasons have that little tornado or have that little amount of tornadoes and that's looking to be the case i think it'll probably end up you know somewhere around there-ish maybe but it, it might be very close i don't know i have to go check the count on that but i do believe we went you know at least over 900 so that is that right now now look at these uh past few years i'm gonna go back all the way back to 2011 now 2011 okay so i guess it wasn't the record year that might have been 2008. I'm not really sure on that. But 2011, there were much above average tornadoes. We had that crazy tornado outbreak in April. We had some more in May as well. And uh, so we ended up with 1,600 tornadoes that year. You know, as a comparison, you know, we're almost, uh, whoops, as a comparison, we're almost like half that, you know, a little bit over half that, but much below average uh, this year. And so 2011, we had above average, but watch the past five years. 2012, we nearly had the minimum amount of tornado, almost a, a record uh, lowest number that year, 2012. It was a pretty boring year for the most part. 2013, and I have to go back and figure out why that says that, but actually at 2013, we only had 802 tornadoes that year. 2014, 897, 2015, 1,068, and then again, 2016, probably going to end up maybe around 950 or 940. So the past several years have been not only below average, but much below average. And I'll uh, go over why that may be in a second here. But I want to note some of those uh, maps that I was showing you, those are preliminary accounts, so some of that data you know, that's kind of why things were jumping under the minimum and stuff. But anyway, this is uh, the uh, tornado counts for each month. This was uh, January, just a few tornado reports in the southeast. February was actually our largest uh, tornado producing month with uh, some outbreaks in the uh, southeastern United States. As we headed towards March, very quiet couple of uh, systems that moved through the central united states but overall very quiet april pretty quiet as well but the planes start you know heating up and stuff may was a very active month actually i think i had above average tornadoes that month and we had some good outbreaks out in uh, the western high plains or just the high plains here so but overall those outbreaks weren't 
you know, extensive, aside from that Dodge City outbreak, and that was mostly just one storm that produced several tornadoes. June was uh, extremely quiet, aside from a little Illinois event. Uh, June was a very quiet month, much below average. July, you had some tornadoes, you know. June, uh, actually August, we had a random surprise tornado outbreak in Indiana. Otherwise, it would have been pretty quiet that month as well. September, just a few scattered reports. In October, just a, a few scattered reports in uh, Kansas. And so how does that relate with uh, previous years? Well, uh, we'll go look at each month again. This is January. January was a, yeah, maybe close to average. I don't actually have the actual. We're just going to compare uh, you know, to previous years. 1999, just huge outbreaks that year. Uh, February. We actually had much above average uh, activity compared to uh, previous years. That was our biggest, ironically, that was our biggest tornado producing month out of all, out of, all of them besides June. March, uh, a little bit below average. May, or excuse me, April, below average. May was a little bit more above average. June, much below average. I mean, that was a very quiet month. July, you know, near average. August, a little bit above average in August. September, probably a little bit below average. And uh, October, I don't know why that one's bigger, but October, uh, a little bit below average as well. That, again, the, that's 2016 right there. So, so far this year, overall, we've been uh, pretty much below average. Here's uh, 2016 right here. And, uh, you can see the past few years have been like that too. 2011's right here. I think that's 2008, 2004. Those are some pretty crazy years. Now, if you see this, you see this little trend. It's kind of gone upwards over the past 50 years. Uh, a lot of that is because of uh, storm chasers and storm spotters. Uh, there's a lot more of them nowadays, so they're actually reporting a lot of tornadoes. They see a lot of them. Back in the day, there wasn't as much of that. And because of that, a lot of the tornadoes went unreported. So even though that it looks like it's trending upwards, I think that's a little bit misleading. So really, the past five years have been really uh, below average. Now, why is that happening? Well, let's just examine this past year. Uh, one of the big uh, influencers of severe weather and tornadoes is uh, El Nino and La Nina. Uh, last year, we had a pretty crazy El Nino. Uh, there was fall 2015 into the winter it started to weaken throughout the spring but there was still a leftover el nino it still was somewhat strong and as you can see here uh this is the tornado frequency the browns are going to be below average uh, and the purple is above average and el ninos actually favor below average it's march through may for hail uh, but tornadoes uh below average as well in the uh kind of the southern plains uh, there's not a whole lot of correlation with that, but there's enough to say, hey, it's probably going to be below average. And then with uh, La Nina winters, you get above average tornadoes and severe weather activity in the uh, southern and central plains. And so that could perhaps be the story uh, heading into this spring, uh, but it's a very weak La Nina, though, however. Another factor is this positive PDO uh, that has been going on. This is the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. And for much of the spring, it's been positive into the summer and uh, then it started to go negative and positive and i think now it's kind of negative again but uh, this can have somewhat of an impact on the uh, severe weather season and so when you get the warm waters in the gulf of alaska you get a a uh, positive pdo when it's cooler it's a negative pdo so how does that impact our weather well let's uh check this right here this is a uh, the pattern of a uh let's see it's a positive pdo yeah it's a positive pdo so you have the warm waters in alaska right here and that causes some ridging out in the western united states okay and the troughs kind of get diverted farther east now for tornado setups uh you know you want southwest flow a lot of the time and your tornado setups will be on this side of the trough okay so that i think there actually was more tornado activity out east this year than usual but uh I mean, that makes the plains not as active and a lot of the time getting northwest flow. Now, we'll look at uh, a negative PDO, uh, which 
was the exact opposite of what this spring was. And that's when you get cooler waters out here and you can get uh, troughing that occurs out in the western and central United States. And so a lot of your tornado setups are going to occur on that side of the, uh, you know, your trough. And, you know, that was pretty much the opposite of uh, this uh, last spring, at least uh, from the PDO. Now, this is not how the pattern is always. It just favors that more often than not. One final factor that's been kind of tossed around is is uh, whether, you know, global warming has any impact on tornado activity. And there's some research that suggests that global warming could weaken the jet stream, okay? And therefore, if you have a weaker jet stream, we're probably not gonna get as uh, crazy of tornado setups. So that could be having somewhat of an impact. However, it wouldn't be so dramatic. You know, the past five years were much below average. It, you know, climatologically speaking, this isn't that long of a period. So, and it wouldn't affect it quite that dramatically. But it could have a slight impact, a very, very slight impact on the, you know, decreasing amount of tornadoes. But overall, you know, you, you, you like to see about 30 years of data when you're examining climate. Okay, a 30-year decline, maybe that's a little bit more promising. But I would say that has a very minimal impact. There's still a lot of research that needs to be done with that. So that being said, if you like this video and uh, want forecasting tutorials and forecasting breakdowns and more videos like this go ahead and subscribe find the big old subscribe button in the middle and i'll be releasing these uh videos for you and also if you want access to my severe weather super forecasting playbook i essentially give you all of the ideal ingredients for a number of different severe weather setups it's a cheat sheet go ahead and click the link in the description below this video click the link in the description below this video, enter your name and your email address, and I, or just your email address, and I'll send it right off to you, okay? So click the link in the description, enter your email, and I'll send it off right to you. And you'll also get more forecasting breakdowns, tutorials, and stuff on a weekly basis uh, by doing that as well. So go ahead and subscribe. Get your super forecasting, severe weather super forecasting playbook. And I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you soon.